What's going on everybody? This is Jason with Buy, Build, Sell. I'm a Los Angeles contractor and developer and today we are doing a home inspection. There's a lot of stuff going on here today. We have Steve from La Roca coming in through. We're going to do a little interview with him. He's going to talk a little bit about how he does his inspections, what he's looking for and kind of the uh, the expectation that's supposed to be had when you're doing an inspection like that with a home inspector. The things that we're really checking for are mostly mechanical things and water intrusions of, of, of sorts, okay? So we're talking about plumbing, electrical, HVAC, water penetration, any, any sort of area where like, so roof, roof deck, things like that. You're talking about the pool, pool safety, things like that. Those are the things we're checking on. We're gonna go through it with Steve. He's gonna give us a little bit more insight and a little bit more detail. Uh, about this process, about home inspection process. Uh, really just wanna say, you guys have been great. If you love the channel, go ahead, press that subscribe button, press the like button, and let's other people just like you know that this video is here and that they might enjoy it also. And don't forget, press that bell button right here because it lets you know that more videos are coming your way. I myself have an opinion about home inspections. I love them. Now. Obviously, there are moments where I'm not happy about the fact that a home inspector has stated something I've done is incorrect or stated that, uh, you know, uh, they're not thrilled with the execution of a certain installation of some sort. But that doesn't mean that it's wrong or incorrect. It means it's an opinion of someone else's. It's really important that when you realize you're doing these things, it's for information. It's to help you better understand what's been done. No point at all are they trying to regulate how a building should be built. They're just placing their opinion on it, on how it's been done. There are multiple levels of uh, execution and you as the uh, client or the builder or the contractor or whatever, you have that opportunity to uh, kind of use that information or not use that information. And it's all up to the person buying the home to state whether they're comfortable or not comfortable with the information given. It is important to get one because most likely you're not going to have the time or the ability to go through a house and actually do the inspection yourself and for the money that it costs to pay someone to do it the money is well worth it because you get a very strong list of what your home is coming with not coming with what works what doesn't work and how you can uh, better be informed on the house that you're buying i hope you guys like the video and uh, i'll see you at the end to remind you to like subscribe and comment what's up all right, so today we got Steve with La Roca, okay? Um, could we talk shit about La Roca and just talk good stuff about Steve? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, just checking, making sure. If you don't know who La Roca is, they are a, uh, a big inspection company, uh, at least I've used them a lot. Uh, I don't know, like, what's the story with it? It's multiple different inspectors within the system sort of thing, right? Sure. Is it franchised or is it? No, it's, it no, it's not franchised. Okay. It's one office. It's multiple inspectors. Okay. Uh, it is multiple companies under one parent umbrella. Okay. What's so, the parent umbrella? So, so we do. So we do. Well, La Roca is the is the parent. Is the parent. Okay. So La Roca does physical inspections, general physical inspections. We have chimney check, which does fireplaces and chimneys. Okay. We have sewer line check, which does sewer line videos, and we have. Uh, mold which basically goes through the house and and brings in toys that i don't have okay and they check stuff for moisture so basically they check everything that'll get me in trouble that's pretty pretty great thanks pretty thanks great. for that sure. chop some numbers off the uh, list price over there all right <laughs> i'm a big proponent of home inspections i believe in them i think they're super important uh, regardless of all of the benefits that a buyer can get from doing them me as a builder, I do them. I mean, I've, I'm the one paying you to be here today. Yeah. Uh, it's a really expensive interview for me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I'm paying you to be here because I want to know what's going on with my house. I want someone who's professional enough to go through this home, inspect it, give me a report on it, and make sure that all of my trades are up to date, that everyone got, that everyone actually completed their jobs, right? Like, you know, you would think that 
there's some things you might not see, but then all of a sudden an inspector checks it and it's not done. Well, I paid my HVAC guy in full on the contract. So now I need to make sure that he's actually going to execute that contract in full, right? So there's, there's things that can just easily get missed. Sure. And especially when, you know, I'm not me memorizing the book. I'm not, I'm not paying attention to every single code that needs to be compliant, right? The inspector even misses things. There's just things Absolutely. that get missed, Absolutely. right? So for me, it's super important to have someone like you here to check the house. That's the reason I do home inspections. My perspective of it is that when you hire someone to do a home inspection, they are checking the things that you genuinely just don't check. I mean, they're checking every window. You're gonna go through a house that you're buying and check every window, crank opens and closes the window and seals the window shut. That's insane for someone to do. Like. I've probably met one or two buyers that would do that. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to lie here, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not a very common thing for a normal human to do. I apologize for all of you who are watching this that would do it. So we have Steve here. The truth is I really want to get the, the, the guts of it. What do you guys really check? What are you really here for? What, what's your perspective? How do you visualize this as being a positive and important thing for a homeowner to do? I mean, basically, as a builder, here's what happens is, is you have somebody, you have several people, several trades, several, several subcontractors under your control. You can't watch them all. You, you assume that they are good guys and that they're doing their job. You have the building inspector check and he says, yes, uh, they've done a minimum standard. He doesn't go through and check every outlet in the house. He doesn't go through and check, you know, the, the temperature at the supply grills. Um, there's lots of stuff that he, he doesn't even have time to check, but you have, okay, 10 or 20 people working on a house. How are you going to supervise them all at the same time? You can to some degree, but there's definitely stuff that slips through the cracks. So yeah, I think it's a great idea to get a home inspection. Um, advantage to a buyer is obviously, does everything work? Does it all function correctly? Um, the advantage to our builder here is, okay, so, what things do we need to fix so that we don't hear from the, the buyers after yeah. they buy the house? It's huge. I don't want to. I don't want them calling me and saying, "Hey, you have to come back and fix this and this and that." It's like, no. So I think for both parties, it's it's a it's an awesome thing. That's actually very true because uh, you 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 know as a new construction build, you offer a one year fit and finish sort of warranty. You know, make sure everything in the house is genuinely working fine. And then there's structural warranties that are provided in California regulated warranties that are, that are provided, at least in California. But like Steve is saying, there are certain things where like, man, like if we just would have known about that right now, that would have been done before you moved in. It would have been working fine. There, you know, someone can move into the house. Maybe they don't even turn on the air conditioning for three months because it's cold and beautiful in LA. What's the point? And then all of a sudden they're like, hey, my AC doesn't work. What do you mean your AC doesn't work? You've been living there for three years. You're telling me now, uh, three months, you're telling me now? Like, so finding out that those things now is like way more important because you can actually get to the root of a lot of small issues that we may not necessarily find right away. What are the things that like, you know, you think are one really important, super important for people to actually be considerate of. And, you know, obviously you check things that may, may not be important. Like, let's say, let's say the windows are not that important of a, of a, uh, item. Right. But what are like the top five things that like, listen, if you're gonna inspect anything, inspect these things. Why do you inspect those things? That sort of information. Okay, I'm gonna give you a six. Okay, six. Okay, so he thought of, he thought of one extra before he even had a chance to <laughs> to stop talking. I was like, I got six. Beautiful. So there's there are six in this particular instance. There are six main systems for this house. Okay. The six main systems are the roof, the plumbing, the electrical, the heating, and air conditioning, the structure, and the swimming pool. The swimming pool breaks down into two parts. First of all, function and condition of the pool and the equipment. And the second one is our latest mandated safety stuff, which sure. came in at the beginning of last year. Mm -hmm. um, so you're supposed to have a minimum of two safety features. Requirements for the pool. For okay. a swimming pool. Um, so that's something to be, something to be inspected. Okay. Uh, I do, it's, that's my nightmares finding out that one of my clients has somebody drown in their pool. Oh, has and that I happened to you? No. Okay. And I don't, t I didn't tell them about it. That's my nightmare. Oh, that would be your, yeah, that's my I nightmare. can understand that so, for sure. Okay. Heating and air is function. Um, 
basically how it's installed. I've seen some really bad installs. Yeah, uh, what's the biggest thing you find that that's the biggest issue with how they're installed? The, the, the racks or? No, um, probably, the, probably the most dangerous one is when they have the, the return and a supply right next to the return and they're too close. Okay. So you can mix they're air, really, so you're getting yeah. combustion air basically yeah. blowing through the house into the returns. Yeah, nothing works. I mean, into the supplies. Right. So now you're, you're just poisoning everybody in the house. Sure. That's not a great thing. So you got the AC and then you go backwards, you're going electrical, plumbing. So electrical, um, basically, when you, when you have an electrical system, you have to make sure that, well, okay. Starting at the beginning, somebody comes in and they says, how much power does this house need? They need to calculate it and find out how much you need. Sure. So good. That's how big of a panel we need. That's how, how, how big of a main breaker we need. Then to break it down from there, the wiring and the breakers have their own requirements. You can yep. only put so many plugs on a yeah, breaker. on everything, yeah, sure. Uh, then you have to have that wire match that breaker size. So we look to see that those are matched up. You can't put two breakers or two wires into a breaker. That's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You can get arcing, you can get overloading. Sure. So that's something that we look for as well. Okay. Um, so that's really important to make sure that when you're, when you're checking for those things that, you know, when you're plugging your vacuum into an outlet, it's not gonna just stop working the second you plug it in or you know, a minute after you start going. It's really protecting to make sure that there's no surges, there's no electrician, there's no, uh, no one's getting electrocuted. You're not waking up in the middle of the night with a call. Hey, I got electrocuted. Because <laughs> I, I figured out what Steve's real fear is. He just doesn't want to be woken up in the middle That's of the night. That's it. <laughs> he wants a full night's rest, all right? This is what he wants. So that's, that's pretty much plumbing and electrical. You know, it's kind of funny. I, I always look at plumbing and go like, what can you really look at it? You know, I guess you can look at like water saving uh, utilities and stuff like that. But the funniest thing that we always seem to miss is actually just turning the water on. There you go. You know, because we're, we're sitting there and all the water's off in the house. So we don't have any, you know, by accident leaks, right. turn everything on and we never go ahead and test all the sinks. We just, you know, turn the valves and everything's working and, you know, then you hope. And then I find out, you know, somewhere up in the bathroom, there's a leak in the, in the catch because no one turned the water on to find out. And now all of a sudden we're finding out. So, you know, that's another thing that's really important for you guys to see. So we, we go in through electrical, plumbing, and then I believe the first thing you said was roof. Is that right? Roof. Roof. Roof is, is definitely one. Hit me with it. So uh, a roof can be installed improperly. Um, you have flashings on the roof which are metal pieces that go basically interface with other parts of the roof, like the, where it hits a wall, mm -hmm. where you hit a valley, where you hit a ridge. There's, you know, different pieces of metal that have to go in sure. there. But so you can't see that most of the it's time. It's all called flashing. You can see that it's present. Uh, you can see that the caulking has, is there. Okay. And if it has been deteriorated. So I'll tell you something cool about this house. Sure. You ready? Mm -hmm. This house was built with uh, this is a plug for Huber, so if you see this, you have to pay me for this uh, little plug here, okay? But well, we used a Huber wood, uh, which is, uh, they have a system called Zip System. And I don't know if you've ever seen it, those, those the, the red sheets and the green sheets that are, that are tied together with the tape, the masking tape, you ever oh, seen that? Uh -huh. So it's basically a waterproofing system in itself. Like, you don't need any exterior wrap on the house. It, it's, all, it's all pressed into one sheet. Wow. When you put that tape on there, it's a seam. It's like a bitch of thing sort of thing, but it becomes a monolithic piece. So the whole entire house has been wrapped in that completely. Wow. Been taped completely. The roof itself, the roof itself is in the same material, taped completely. It has, I think, a 300 and something day water test guarantee. So literally you can build a box out of this wood, pour water in it, and for 300 something days you can sit it aside it won't absorb, it won't leak, it won't do anything. It's, it's incredible, awesome. it's an absolutely incredible system. That's awesome. uh, and, a, and obviously we know that water doesn't sit on a house like that as often, right? We have drain systems up there, we have scuppers on, the, on, on our roof as an emergency drain, we have a scupper on the lower deck by the stairs. Intense systems we put up there, but you'll see it. But just so you know, pretty cool system. That's cool. what I was, the thing I was gonna share with you. That's the one cool. thing I found interesting that you did not mention, yes. which is my, uh, I, I hope I'm saying this right. Achilles heel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, fireplaces. Okay. Do you do fireplaces? You do them, right? We do look at fireplaces. Now here's, here's the thing. There are specialists that do fireplaces. Okay. Uh, 
Um, I do not have a camera. I don't put a camera. I mean, I have a little click camera, but I don't have a camera to go up the flu. Okay. You're not which, a doctor. That's right. I don't, I don't do that. Uh, <clears throat> never mind. I won't say that word. Uh, anyway, so basically the, the, the chimney specialists typically have a camera and they will put a camera down the flue or up the flue. They rotate it as they're going up so they can see any, any imperfections in the seams, oh, yeah. anything that's any holes because it's a very vulnerable okay. thing. So when you check fireplaces, what are you checking for? You checking for just the gas lines or that's been pieced together correctly? Well, I, I mean, I do check for safety things. For instance, this guy. Um, <clears throat> you can have flammable materials too close to the opening, both top and sides. Okay. So I check for that. Um, also, I do check the gas when we have gas service, which we don't. We don't have that today, yeah. But. Uh, and then I look inside. I mean, there's there's several things that I can check. Like sometimes there's gaps here, mm -hmm. and there's flammable material behind it. Mm -hmm. That's not okay either. Sure. Because that's going to catch on fire eventually. You know, Do you see that often in new construction, or you see that more in remodels? Mm. Yeah, I don't think I've seen it a lot in new construction. It's hard to find it in new construction. I, I have definitely why. seen it. Yeah, because when they install when they install the fireplaces, there's actually a a. a, a like a concrete uh, fiber cement board that they're now installing immediately. So it's now like we don't even have an option. Good. You know, we can't even put combustible material behind it. Now, obviously, people can, you know, mess up and put something combustible near it or on top of it, but behind it, right up, right up in that section, yeah. non combustible material, they put it, they, they actually install it for the total width, the uh, length that's needed and width. So they do it by spec, by code. It's this thing that they're already doing. Mm -hmm. So that drywall actually gets put on and cut around it. So it's already there. Now yeah. it's up to me to make sure that my finish is right. But it's 100% true. That's why it's not that common in new construction. Right. I wanted to teach you something. Yeah, yeah. As you were, you were giving me some information, I wanted to throw it back as a favor. Sure. Beto, you have any questions? I do. For a home inspector? Make it only one. You only get one. I know you. You're, you're going to start going at it. <laughs> only one knows. question. <laughs> I have my notes. I'm still learning. I have a bunch of notes. <laughs> for the air conditioning, okay, how do you get inspected before you actually get the startup done? So here's the deal. You asked me a question at the beginning of this. I, I actually sat down at one time taking the CREA standards, that's California Real Estate Inspection Association standards, and typed in one dot for every line of my report and printed it. Okay. Uh, 300 and change items to look at that's a lot that's a lot of items yeah that, i mean but that's us that's just talking about like little things even like the door latches or doesn't latch right sure okay when it comes to that i cannot have the air, the hvac units running right. on temporary power because i don't have enough enough amperage on that not even for not even one at a time huh i mean we can try and do that however um i don't have my techs come and do the startup yeah, until sure. we have enough juice for the units. Sure, makes sense. So for, for that case, what do we do? Like, do we reschedule you or do, is there certain things that you can look at and go like, all right, that works. And then yeah. you just come and check on performance after or? There are certain things that I can do, sure. Um, so, so here's what happens with heating and air conditioning and here's what I see a lot of, is that if this is a wall, the heating and air conditioning system can't be right up against the wall. It basically needs the air conditioning needs airflow around it so that it can actually function properly. If it's closer than 12 inches, it's too close. So that's one thing. I can check the disconnects. Mm -hmm. I can see if the dis disconnects there. Uh, I can see if the unit is level. So there's a few things that I can see and then I've got to find the furnace and find out similar things about the furnace. Is it sealed around the base if it's a gas furnace? Do we have any mixing combustion air that, mm -hmm. is, a, that is a hazard? Um, so there's definitely stuff to be inspected, but I can't obviously turn it on and run it. Are there any requirements? Like I know uh, necessarily, not necessarily, but like to become a building inspector, you know, most of them have had some sort of license in the past. C27, B, whatever it is, right? Do you guys have to have a history of like doing this or is there just a certification that you pass? Or you know, what is the process for you to become a home inspector? Okay. Um, there, a lot of inspectors do have a construction background. Some do not. Um, I have watched both be trained and 
Believe it or not, a lot of times it's a lot easier to train somebody that has it no clue. Yeah. You can you can train it means, you can train a baby, but you know a dog is set in its ways. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's a there's a saying in there somewhere. I messed that up completely. You can't yeah. teach an old dog new tricks. You can't yeah. teach an old dog new tricks. There you go. So I have a kind of an interesting story. Um, I, I actually had a bee license before I even started doing this. Okay. I built a bunch of stuff. Um, so the thing that I found interesting is when I got into this. So when you're building something, basically you have the code book. You've got a guide and a pass mm -hmm. to get the project done. Yep. Um, when you're inspecting, you don't have that. So you're inspecting a hundred year old house. What's the standard? Yeah, what do you keep up to it? Sure. What do you, what, where do you yeah. draw that None line? None of this passes. So, it's gonna fall down in right. <laughs> three, so, two. So, <laughs> so I actually learned a lot of stuff okay. going from being a, a contractor to an inspector. I mean, a lot of stuff. I was shocked, I was like, my God, I have no idea. <laughs> Seriously, I believe that um, because you there's just things that you don't when you're building stuff You don't think about you're not that's not your focus your yeah. focus is I need this thing to work I do need it to be safe But I need it to work primarily It's true. I mean a lot of people ask me if I do remodels and truthfully I don't do remodels most of the time because of, of what you're saying like I don't have that enough experience in those in those moments of dealing with a hundred year old home and how to solve the issues that may come up with it, I'll be way more expensive than someone who's had the experience to deal with it. Yeah. So yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm really curious to know what you learned, but I, I promised I wouldn't ask another question, so I'm not gonna ask another question. If you bring it up without me saying anything. <laughs> the, list, the list is long. <laughs> okay. The list is long. That's probably fun. longer than we want to take in this interview. <laughs> okay, well listen, I, I genuinely appreciate it. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna check out some of the stuff that you guys are inspecting. See how you guys inspect it. I'll talk Chris's ear off about more of the things that I think are uh, important about doing a home inspection. You know, one of the things that I think people hate about having a home inspector is because they think that, like, they might not know the codes and that they're, they're going to say something that's an opinion and not, not a fact. And the, the important thing is, is it doesn't, like, to me, I look at it and I go, yeah, he, he might be right. Like, you know, you might inspect something and to you and your standards, it's not okay, but it might, might pass inspection just fine, right? So I look at it and I go, I understand, right? And I, I can either make that decision on, the, on that report to say, I wanna fix that. Because what you're probably talking about is above and beyond the standard that needs to be met, but that doesn't mean it shouldn't be met, right? There you go. So what what people have to realize is that you have you as the as the owner or the builder or the the client necessarily has the decision to make that call you just have to be informed correctly right but anyway and that's the game getting the information out there yeah exactly but anyway steve seriously thank you so much sure. i appreciate it we'll see you on the inspection I'm gonna, get work. I'm gonna go that way just so it doesn't look you know doesn't you know looks more natural like this wasn't staged Ah, this way. Yeah. Okay. What's going on, everybody? If you like this video, please go ahead, press the like button. It lets other people like you know they might like it too. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Press that bell button. It lets you know that more videos are coming your way. Now, if you loved this video about home inspections, we have another one right up here. You can watch the Sancola video, find out more about and more in detail, uh, you know, find out what happened on the job site because the day of inspection I had a leak, if you can remember. And if you don't remember, watch the video. All right, I'll see you there.